Hello Neverwinter. Uh, do you want to learn how to do something like this? Um, this is not mine. This is someone from the SEA. I don't have a name for them. It was just pulled up on Google Images. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make something similar. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nephilim. And I am from Mythic Forge. And I'm going to be teaching a class on how to do Celtic knot work on squirrels. So a lot of people don't know how to do this, and at least the way I do it is, is fairly easy. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how thick your lines are going to be, and you want to figure out the design. Um, for this example that I have in front of you, uh, the lines are going to be as thick as uh, one square on this graph paper. And uh, there's not really going to be any design other than just straight uh, knot work. So, um, with that said, I'll, I'll just begin. Um, so, I do this on graph paper and then I usually end up tracing it to the finished product. If you do digital art, a lot of, um, a lot of programs have a grid option that you can overlay, um, add your dots, I hope you can see the dots, uh, onto a separate layer, and then uh, you can take off the grid overlay and delete the layer after you're done, uh, which is probably easier. Um, so this is, this is, uh, the way I do it is meant to be traced onto a manuscript later. You could uh, draw everything and then erase it from your final manuscript. That's why I'm doing this in pencil. Uh, but I usually end up tracing it. I think it looks neater. I don't have uh, erase marks or any leftover bits on my finished scrolls. Okay, so you have the dots here. Um, I just have them spaced uh, a single block apart on this graph paper. And um, then you have to connect the dots. And you don't want to actually um, touch the dots. You want to be inside the dots because you want to have room um, You want to have um, room after you finish because you want to have a space in between the holes or in between the lines. So you just go down the list. You're, you're essentially cross hatching. And you just continue that pattern. All the way down and up. Ideally you want them all to be even. Uh, I'm not worried so much about that for the purposes of demonstration. So um, they will probably turn out uneven, but that is fine, um, because this isn't going on an actual scroll. This is for example purposes.
gonna be boring for just a minute. There's up and down, and there's additional stuff towards the end of the class, but it's a lot of repetitive movement for now. And again, ideally you would take more time with this and make sure everything is even, because some of these are wildly uneven, but um, for the purposes of demonstration, that's okay. Okay, so you have a completed grid that's cross-hatched. Uh, all you have to do now is essentially connect the lines. Um, so this is sometimes difficult for people when they're dealing with the corners. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can zoom in. And move things around so it's easier to see. There we go. So all you want to do is you want to go up and around and up and around. And it's it's just like that. Uh, you just keep connecting everything to where it would naturally go. Connect everything you can in a way that would make most the most sense. Um, so you have that, um, and it just, just continues just like that. Let me zoom back out. Okay, and you just continue connecting everything all the way around.
And if you do this right, you won't have much work to do. Um, because um, your lines, when you cross hats, should be very, fairly close together. Um, and this should be even, so when you're making them connect, um, it should not be difficult. It's a little more difficult for this example, just because, for example, here, I mean, the lines aren't even close to connecting. Um, but if I took my time and did it um, a way that I would actually put on a scroll, then um, it would be a lot a lot neater, a lot easier to to see. Um, but that's that's a very time consuming process that uh, would probably be best left to something that's not limited to 45 minutes or less. So after I complete this, the plan was to show you um, some specialty examples, and I'm still going to do that, um, but that was when I tried to record this class for the first time, um, and so I was actually going to complete it on camera already been completed I suppose I could do it again um, but I'm probably just going to show you the examples um, so again you just want to uh, finish all along making sure everything lines up uh, as neatly as possible where it would naturally go and especially for something as as relatively simple as as this weave um, everything sort of lines up even. It's it's a straight line. It goes down and up and down and up and it weaves its way around and it's one solid line that you can follow all the way around. It's also a fairly thick line so it's hard to get lost. Uh, so I didn't uh, finish connecting a lot of the stuff in the middle and obviously you would do that. Um, it makes a neater, a, a, a neater fixer and um, you can see the the holes, um, for example, here. Um, and eventually, you would you would erase all the circles and leave just the knot work. Um, again, I'm not going to do that mostly because I did this all in pencil. And if I try to erase the holes, I'm going to erase the whole thing. So I will move on to geometric designs. So uh, this was done larger than I normally do. Uh, for purposes of demonstration. So this is about the size that, maybe if it'll focus, hello, focus. Okay, this is about the size I would normally do on a scroll, um, just because scrolls have a, usually have a certain size, and um, anything bigger than this uh, tends to take up a lot more of the scroll than a lot of people intend to do. Uh, it doesn't have time for calligraphy or other illumination. It doesn't have uh, word. It doesn't have uh, space for the words, and um, it's just it, it ends up taking up too much space. So let me see if this can focus. There we go. That's better. Um, so I just did a simple geometric design here. Um, hopefully, you can see that in the dots. Um, there's a hole right here, or I guess a square, um, where I just connect the lines, another one here, and another one here, and I'm noticing now as I'm recording this, um, that it is not as even as it could be. Um, I could have made the straight lines here and here, um, three a piece instead of two a piece, um, and that way the middle bit would be more symmetrical with the ends, but and that's fine, it's still symmetrical because it's the same on both sides. Um, and so, it, below you have the cross hatching. And again, this isn't as even as it could be. I did this um, fairly quickly the first time. And um, just reusing the, the uh, material from, from the first time I attempted to record. Uh, so you have the cross hatching and ignore the fact that it's uneven. 
um, you can see the holes and you can see uh, my my design here all the way across um, and then the finished design will look like if it focuses it does not want to focus there we go so you have the hole there um, it's slightly more difficult to see but you have um, this is connected uh, here instead of going up uh, again this is a round connector um, so you can see the line and you can see that uh, this has a, a little uh, head jutting out here uh, let's go across you have another another hole another one over here and you have um, ignore my phone going off and you have um, again the, the line going up here so that's sort of the process you just make the make the holes uh, I mean make the dots and when you make the dots you want to draw the geometric design in the dots uh, and that will help you follow it better um, you just cross hats uh, another important thing is you can cross hats in the hole if you want to I just chose not to because I don't see a point um, I also, after I was uh, doing this a second time, decided not to put the holes where the hole, the, the dots where the hole would be. Uh, again, that's just because I knew nothing was going to be there. I didn't need them as guides. Um, I know some people, very few I'm imagining, but some people can do this without the, the dots or anything. They can just hand, hand draw this and that is a skill that I probably will never have. Um, another important thing is to note where the lines are, where this, this, um, geometric design is. Uh, my cross hats is, I'm missing a few. Uh, wherever the line is, I don't have hats. Um, and that is, um, because I shouldn't have hats. Um, because if I had hats, they would just be going through the lines. And you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be able to see that design. Uh, it would just... Be like the first design where it just goes uh, up and down and up and down okay and so finally i have some more designs and what it turned out with after i was done so let me boom. So this is something you haven't seen uh, before, and that is uh, the outside lines are all connected uh, up here in my dot drawing. Um, there's a hard outline, and uh, that is that is the outline for the piece. That is how how big it is going to be. Um, sometimes I include this, sometimes I don't. Uh, again, it's more of a guideline, and you can see right down here it went past that just slightly. Um, ideally it would stay inside, um, but I, I was trying to, um, freehand this and, uh, it didn't turn out the best, but it turned out a lot better than I thought it would. Um, so I didn't want to have the, the dots and the, uh, the lines in this drawing, so I tried to freehand it, um. You can probably see they're uneven. You can't see a hole there. It's it's not the best, um, but I hope it's pretty good for, for freehanding. Um, and you just see the lines. I, I just chose a simple line pattern. I, I made uh, like half boxes, I guess. Um, just following my dots around um, and then a line in the center, and so this is this is how it turned out when I finished it. And there is theoretically other ways it could turn out, um, but I try to keep it as naturally as I can. Um, the the lines connect in a certain way when you finish, and um, this seemed to be the way that they should connect. And. Then I have this design. Again, some holes, three holes and two geometric designs. Um, that's, for me, that's what I've seen. 
um, and that's what I've done on my scrolls that I've made. So that's what I tend to practice, and that's what I'm showing you. Um, you could theoretically have any amount of hole or any size of hole. Um, you could do the designs in any way you please. There are some people who do uh, circular knot work, um, and that's just that's something that. I would find very difficult, especially since um, how I'm doing it now is using, often using graph paper. Um, so trying to do that without a, a grid format would be exceptionally difficult for me. Um, so again, you have the dots, you have the design. Ideally, you would have a middle step where you, cro where you uh, cross hats. I just decided against that. Um, and then you have the, the finished product where you have the holes. And then you can see the lines here and here, which almost, uh, th there is no line here or here. But it almost creates the illusion that there is. It almost creates the illusion that this middle part is is a box. Um, which is something I like. Because then you can have uh, whatever the, the center of your scroll, assuming this is either at the top or the bottom, or both, you can have um, something centered. And this helps to draw your eye to it. Or your eye is also drawn to it afterwards and you start to notice it. Um, and being noticed is sort of the idea, I think, of not, not work. It's pretty, it's, um, it's an extra thing to add to your scrolls that you make or the scrolls that you commission. Um, it, it looks nice. Uh, I mean, this one in particular, I mean, there's some bad examples, but I think it turned out even better than um, the previous one in terms of of how it looks based on uh, me trying to freehand it. Um, I, and again, the, the fact that it's on graph paper helps tremendously, because even without the guiding dots, I know where the dots would be in this pattern, especially since they're, they're literally right here above. So I, I can imagine a dot here, a dot all the way across this hole, um, I can imagine dots in the middle of every box, and so I can sort of, um, not freehand the best, but I can, I can freehand a lot better, um, than if I didn't have the grid, because even if I don't have the dots, I have the grid, and the grid is still a guide. And that's about all of the material I have, um, available. So you had um, the dots, then you cross hats, then you have uh, the finished design. And um, a few other designs. I guess I still have um, approximately 20 minutes of the class. Um, I can finish this one up or I can just let you guys go. Um, well, I think I'm going to let you guys go. Um, the first class I attempted to teach almost ran over, but I was trying to, um, uh, do material, which, because I did it then, I already had done now. Um, so yeah, if, if you're doing this digitally, uh, you will have the option to make a grid, um, on your whatever platform you use, uh, GIMP or, or Paint or whatever has a grid option that overlays your canvas with a grid, so you can follow that easier. Um, if you're using most digital platforms, they have different layers, so you can make your dots on a separate layer, and then you can just delete the whole layer instead of having to erase the dots. Um, some of these are uneven, but that would 
that comes with time and practice. Um, just making them, them even, making them fit. Um, making sure that the lines don't cross over each other. I see a, a tiny example here where um, this line is just cutting into that, and obviously you would erase that. But um, in general, it's it's not too difficult if you do it this way. Um, again, I've seen people freehand. I've seen people um, make some sort of circular knot work. Uh, and I definitely will not be attempting that anytime soon, but that might be a future project.